Love and Murder, Atlanta Playboy. That's、uh, BET Plus's new movie based on the true story of Atlanta millionaire Lance Herndon and the woman who ended him, Dion Baugh. The movie stars Tay Diggs as Lance Herndon. It also stars April Jones and Keisha Sharp. Love and Murder, Atlanta Playboy gets its direction from Jaira Thomas and is written by Gregory R. Anderson. Based on the book by Ron Stodgill, Love and Murder Atlanta Playboy introduces us to Lance Herndon, a handsome black Gatsby esque millionaire businessman in Atlanta who was found slain in his bed. Now, the story in real life was a fatal attraction case. And it is sometimes referred to as the millionaire murder case. And a lot of you probably remember this story. There are many documentaries, TV shows, and、uh, videos on this case. His killer? A Jamaican beauty and scorned lover known as Dion Baugh. Now, the trial played out on court TV. I did not attend the original trial, but. I saw the trial on court TV. I think they had both trials on there, not sure, but I do remember seeing one of the trials. And listen, the case was riveting. You know how they always have these stories about the most riveting cases that were shown on television? They never include the Lance Herndon case, but it was really something. It had. Everything. It had prestige, money, power, privilege, beauty. And as I think back to that trial, I remember seeing a slew of beautiful black women taking the stand. They were all gorgeous. And they had all dated、uh, the Access Inc. computer consultant and entrepreneur at one time. Or at the same time,、uh, he really had a thing for. The ladies and the ladies loved Lance Herndon. So I got involved with the case back in 2013. I wrote a few articles about it for the Examiner, the Inquisitor, and I've written about it、um, on my own blogs. And、um, so I believe the first time I got involved with it was in 2013. And listen, there has been interest in making a movie about this case for a long time because I remember someone reaching out to me.、Um, And I had not even written on that case. It was another story that I had written. And the guy said, Well, you know, I'm also interested in writing.、Um, I, I have a script for、uh, the Lance Herndon case. And I, he said, Do you know that case? And I said, Yes. And,、um, but he never, I guess, got the funding for it. So I see that this movie is based on the book by Ron Stodgill. And、uh, that's going to be very interesting because if you've read Ron Stodgill's book, It is also riveting and it really gets into,、um, gets into this case in a way that you can really sink your teeth into and understand. And、uh, I love hearing him tell that story、uh, on different documentaries. I've been on two with him, and then I tell you someone else who does a great job reciting this case, and that's Clint Rucker, the prosecutor. Love to hear him tell that story, and it's a sad one. You know, these cases make great TV. You know, they're movies and we think of them that way, but they're really not. You know, I, I think that I have even changed my view on a lot of these stories because it is easy to consider these cases as entertainment. But when you really think about it from the point of view of the victim and you get into the details of it, it's.、Um, These are real stories, and these movies and these television shows are good because it helps us to see what happened to these people. And maybe we can take away a lesson or two from those stories so that it won't happen to you or so that it won't happen to anyone that you love. But that's not always the case, right? I mean, even if you. Give people warnings, sometimes they don't listen.、Um, Lance Herndon was mesmerized by Dionne Baugh. She was a seductress, she was very pretty, and he had a thing for pretty, exotic women.、Um, 
And, and, you know, like I said, and all of the women were pretty. I think what made her stand out was the fact that she was a seductress. You know, she had the accent and she was from Jamaica. And I think he, he just fell for that. I'm going back through the timeline that I created here. Um, let's go back to 1955 just briefly. So we know that he was born in 1955 and then he passed away in 1996. He passed away in August of 1996. And I think he was born in April. I believe it was April. And you know, the months leading up to your birthday those are always the most dangerous times, I believe. A person has to be really careful during that time, especially, uh, I would say, the month before and after your, your birthday is the most dangerous time I've learned. And, uh, but that can go back as far as several months before. And if you kind of don't see the signs, one of the signs would be that your life is sort of spiraling out of control. And I have seen this personally in my own life. You know, when things are starting to spiral, you know something's going to break. You know something's about to happen, but sometimes you can't stop it, especially if you're dealing with another person and you're advising them. And I think that, I think Lance saw his life spiraling out of control. I don't think that he knew that it would end this way, but I think that he knew that he was getting in himself into quite a situation. So he met her at one of the swankiest hotels in Atlanta, right? It was a moonlit party. And uh, my understanding is that she sort of prowled that place uh, like a cougar. You know, she, she wanted Lance and that was her, you know, he was her target. She had sort of swindled her way into the party by using her boss's uh, invitation. And, um, and of course, when he met her, he was taken by her. I mean, and, and, and from what I understand, he, she was... In the bedroom, I think she did more for him than anyone. And he told people this. He was very open about it. He talked about how she was and what she did and how he liked it. I mean, he was very open about it. And all of the other girls kind of took a, you know, had to take um, a lesser role in his life at that time when he first met her, I believe. But then he started to see the red flags, right? You don't get to be a businessman, a millionaire businessman, that savvy without being smart. But he had no fear. And I think that was part of the problem. He didn't have any real fear. And he had received warnings, right? He saw red flags and and a lot of times those red flags will come on subtly, right? You call in a little bit too much and you're, you're coming by without calling. And those are the red flags. That's it. And at that point, you're supposed to cut it off. Look, I, this is it. We're done. Go away. But he didn't. He didn't. And that cost him. It cost him. Um, he underestimated her and didn't really think that she was dangerous. I don't think that he really thought that. But he saw something that, that probably scared him a little bit. And by the time he started pulling back from her, it was, it was too late. It was too late. By then, she was... Um, invested in that relationship and she wanted him and she wanted to be the only one and it was just not going to happen and so I think what really made things spiral out of control was when he called the police on her.
promised her that he was going to go to court to get rid of the charge, and she needs to find out if he's really good. So she goes to his house. And that probably not, you know, if he had not called, I wonder how that would have turned out. I wonder if he, that could have saved his life by not calling because she really lost it after that. And it was her own fault, really. I mean, it was. That was a mistake because um, her being arrested, it was going to ruin her life. You know, it was going to ruin her reputation. It was going to ruin her reputation in the Jamaican community. And it was going to make her lose her job probably. And, you know, it was going to ruin her life in a way. And she really wanted him to take care of that and get that off of um, her record. And he promised to do it, but as we know, he did not. And after spending the night with him, that night when she came over and had spent that intimate time with him, only to go downstairs and find out that he had lied, that he really had no plans to do what he said he was going to do. And uh, she lost it at that point. And well, all of it comes rushing back to me. And it was just sad. And she finds herself it was sad. Full-blown rage. His mother found him. When your mother finds you, I mean, I've been through this. I went through this two years ago with my own daughter when I found her. When you find your own child deceased, I don't know how to explain what that feels like. I don't. The only thing I can say is that it hits you in the womb. You feel it there. And you will feel it there until the end of your life. Right? It doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. And so uh, she was devastated to find him like that in his bed. Nothing on. I, he didn't have anything on. His arms, I believe, were crossed over his chest, sleeping like a prince. That's how he liked to sleep. He, he had great self-esteem. He, he thought a lot of himself, and he just didn't have any fear. And I don't think anyone could really talk to him and warn him. Probably the only person who could really warn him would be his mother. And I believe she did that. She did try to warn him, but he, you know, he didn't listen. And sadly, it ended up, it ended terribly. And um, so it'll be interesting to see how this movie captures all of that. Uh, like I said, I think these cases do a lot for teaching us how not to get in situations like that. And well, That's what happens when passion leads to murder, right? So the police get there and they can't figure out who did this. Doesn't seem to be any forced entry. It looks like he was having fun the night before. It looks like he had entertained someone. And so who was this? this? Is this someone he knows? It had to be someone he knows. And so they're going through and they're trying to figure it out. Was it a business par partner? He had so much going on. He had so much jealousy around him, jealousy and enemies and people just envious of his life and envious of his looks and envious of his way with, with women. And he had the women fighting over him and arguing over him. And it was chaos. It was chaos, right? And uh, anyway, they traced it back. After untangling all of the suspects, uh, they traced it back to Dion. And she was arrested for it and went through a couple of trials. And ultimately, uh, she agreed to manslaughter in a plea deal, which landed her in prison for 10 years. Okay? So... This story comes out... September 21st, I wanted to see if there was anything else that I wanted to tell you or talk about. Now, nobody knows where Dion is. 
uh, or at least I don't know. Let me go back here. The last I heard anything was 2019. She was supposedly back, back in Jamaica. I think when she first got out, she stayed in Georgia for a time. And then after that, at some point, she left and moved to Florida. Someone wrote to me and told me. And then in 2019, a producer told me that they, they were told that she was back in Jamaica. So who knows? Who knows if that was true? We don't know. But I do know she keeps up with the cases. They all keep up with this case. Um, and, you know, this story just has affected a lot of people. And that's all I really want to talk about. I don't want to get too deep into the case. I'll let you guys watch it on TV and get the book and and get more information on it. So, But I am interested to know what you think about it. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this. I, I don't, didn't get a chance to see this ahead of time. Sometimes I'm able to get a copy and see to review the movie before it comes out, but I did not for this one, so I'll be watching it along with you guys. So I you know, really want to know what you guys think. I already know Tay Diggs is going to be a great Lance Herndon. I can't think of any other Hollywood actor that would do a good job. I mean... I just think he would be perfect for it. I think he is perfect for the role. Um, so we'll see. Now, the movie, I believe, changes the names of the, of the young ladies. For those names, you'll have to do a little bit of digging, okay, for the real names. And uh, I won't say them in this video, you know, because, you know, one of them is, the last time I looked, one of them... I think the one who he used the most, she is like a teacher or was a teacher or something like that. And when I saw her profile, her life had completely changed. And I thought, you know, who who didn't do silly things in their 20s? You know what I'm saying? So I don't, you know, I, I'm not going to put the names in this video. But I guess if you guys want to see them, you can look around and, and find out. Uh, her daughter... Uh, Dion's daughter is beautiful, young lady, very pretty, much like her mother, smart. Last time I heard she was studying medicine, that was several years ago, so hope she's doing okay despite everything that happened, you know? And uh, anyway, let me, guy let me know what you guys think. September 21st, and then again on September 28th for the second part. Love and Murder. Atlanta Playboy.